G'day YouTube, Warbles on right here with part two of background briefing investigating Pine Gap. In the greater mission of targeting, which is a, it's pretty much a global affair. Uh, you have different countries doing different things all working together. It's collaborative and it's really hard to say, you know, the Australians are responsible for this or the British are responsible for that. Everybody's working together and, you know, if the Australians were involved in one piece that happened to be used in a strike, they're essentially complicit with whatever the end result is. This man was deeply affected by his experience and believes the Australian government knows well the true nature of the alliance relationship, but is unwilling to tell the public. We talk about military partnerships, but in reality, like the Australian military is really doing the bidding of the U.S. military, in a sense. So, you know, we talk about how we're partnered in Alice Springs, but, you know, you have uh, China as your greatest trading partner, yet the U.S. is, uh, it seems, more geared towards U.S. interests. And I think that the Australians are really reluctant to admit their complicity in whatever they're doing, partly because it's not entirely... Well, it might not be perceived entirely by the Australian population that they're acting out of the Australian population's interest. My name is Lisa Lane. Specifically, my last two years of deployment, I worked at Beale Air Force Base on what is called the distributed ground system. I worked on security and different things of that nature. Can you tell me what this distributed ground system does? Basically, it's a um, very large networked system. It's a large telecommunication system that networks data pretty much around the globe. How does it all fit together? How does it work? So I'm not permitted to tell you exactly about, you know, any of the, the technology that puts it together. But what I can say is that I wish I could. I wish that a lot of us knew what is being done in our name overseas and what is being used to um, consummate these wars. Uh, the base out of Pine Gap has 800 odd staff there. The Australian government describes it as something a little more than a relay station. Do you know the sort of analysis that goes on there? You know, I can only tell what's been, you know, put on the internet and um, historically, uh, Pine Gap has been doing that same kind of work for years. You know, I can't tell you specifics because I like my freedom and I don't want to end up in a federal prison, even though it is for the common good of people to know what is being done in our name. Despite understandably holding back on the technical detail, Lisa Ling knows the effects of the drones she helped keep in the air. Drones hover. They hover above soccer games they hover above marketplaces they hover above places where people do their daily things like shopping praying they hover and you don't know whether the next time you turn around you're going to see your grandmother in pieces imagine if that were happening to us with very little governance we would not tolerate it so why is it that we are tolerating it on black and brown people around the globe why where has our humanity gone in the 10 years to 2017, the UK's Bureau of Investigative Journalism documented thousands of lethal US drone strikes in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen and other countries, killing thousands of militants but also hundreds of civilians. It was such reports of civilian casualties caused by not-so-precision drone strikes that led Lisa Ling to resign her position on the US drone communication systems. She wanted to see the human impact of the drone strikes she'd worked on as a US Air Force technical sergeant. And so, in 2013, she traveled to Afghanistan. Because of the distance with the drone technology, I wanted to see what it was really like on the ground. I wanted to meet these people face to face. I wanted to get back in touch with the humanity that is just so missing in the drone program. We're talking about human beings and we've relegated to conversation to 
technological terms to, you know, we've relegated human beings to be targets. And I think that killing by remote control without any situational awareness is wrong. And I don't think we can fight a war on terror with more terror. Being a part of this sometimes extrajudicial drone killing program has driven her to speak out at conferences, to veteran groups, to the European Parliament, and in the media. She can't keep her silence. Is silence complicity? I mean, I believe it is. If I'm not speaking out about something that I don't want done in my name, then I'm complicit. And I, I don't think that anyone who is any part of this particular system can say they're not. It's not like I went to work in the morning and I pressed an enter key on a keyboard and all of a sudden a child died in Yemen. It doesn't work like that. It's much more complex and in some ways convoluted. But I don't think that the methodology that causes the death of that child in Yemen needs to be dissected in such a way. You know, if there's one communications node in Australia, then Australia as a nation state is complicit in what happens. Peter Jennings believes if we have the best technology, we should use it. This is not about handing out sweets to children. You know, I think we've, we've sugar-coated way too much of what the nature of military operations are. Now, there's no point going into battle saying, uh, well, we aren't going to equip ourselves with the technology to do this as efficiently as we can. David Rosenberg is a 23-year veteran of the NSA and for 18 years was stationed at Pine Gap where he was team leader of weapon and signals analysis. The uh, tasking that we get at Pine Gap is really just the saying, look for this signal coming out of this particular location. Uh, if you find it, report it. And if you find anything else that might be of interest, report that as well. So that's the kind of tasking that we would be looking for. It would be up to the, the recipients who get this kind of intelligence to make those kind of decisions as to, is that relevant? Is that what we're looking for? Are these the people that we are targeting? Could they be civilians? One thing I can certainly tell you is that um, uh, the governments of Australia and the United States would, of course, want to minimize all civilian casualties. Pine Gap certainly does help to provide limitation of civilian casualties by providing accurate intelligence. In counterinsurgency in countries where there's perhaps not warfare, and I think of Philippines at the moment perhaps, and in countries where there's no declaration of war, is there any risk that that's overstepping the mark in assisting a military to pick targets in a country that neither Australia nor the US is officially at war with? Well, making those kind of decisions, of course, is at a much higher level uh, than what would be decided on at the Pine Gap facility. So uh, really, we simply uh, uh, receive the intelligence tasking as we get it, knowing that that's already been evaluated already and has been properly vetted for uh, those of us at Pine Gap to collect those signals. Uh, so the targets that we do go after are always fair game for collection by Pine Gap. Do you see on a screen that something's gone wrong when you're doing things? Do you know that, for example, blimey, they hit the wrong building, we weren't targeting that. Do you see it unfolding? We don't see it unfolding. Uh, we hear about it, of course, uh, on the news, et cetera. And like I said, every time it, it happens, it's a real tragedy. When you lose people and when when people die who really are non-combatants, uh, uh, but that does happen. It's been reported over and over that it does happen. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, hopefully that is a, a very uh, limited occurrence. And Rosenberg wants it to be absolutely clear just what the base is not capable of. Well, I can tell you that Pine Gap has absolutely no offensive capability whatsoever. The satellites are simply passive collectors. So there's no decisions made at the Pine Gap facility by any personnel there uh, to, let's say, initiate a drone strike, to monitor any kind of uh, drone uh, uh, communications, uh, uh, to initiate a strike by uh, drones or any other type of aircraft, let's say. So the facility is there simply to passively eavesdrop on electronic signals, to collect them, to analyze those signals. And like I said, it has no offensive capability whatsoever.
and the base is of great benefit to Australian military forces on overseas operations, according to David Rosenberg. Well, one of the things that uh, the facility does, of course, is to monitor any kind of military hotspots. If the Australian military were involved in any uh, operations and Pine Gap could help, to that extent, to uh, evaluate and determine what was happening on the ground, let's say. Uh, we could minimize the risk to any Australian uh, military personnel who, uh, who might be involved in those, in those operations. Human rights experts think even if it's worth it, the public needs to be informed. I think Pine Gap personnel should be told exactly whether or not, with good, proper legal advice from the government, whether or not what they're doing is potentially a war crime or not. That's Emily Howie, an international humanitarian law expert. We'll hear more from her later in the program. We asked the Minister for Defence, Maurice Payne, to be interviewed about the base and the implications of the new information contained in the NSA documents. She declined the request. In this story, the task of explaining the Australian support of US drone strikes, defending the use of Pine Gap to support US military operations, and discussing the utility of the US-Australia alliance falls to Peter Jennings. He's from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, an independent think tank in Canberra, funded largely by the Department of Defence. I have to be a little careful in what I say about Pine Gap. I've been in the national security community and I have some constraints on what I can say about the joint facilities. If you accept that our country uh, in the form of the US and for that matter Australia, um, if you accept that we're fighting necessary conflicts in um, in the Middle East, then um, it's appropriate that our intelligence facilities support those conflicts. It reflects a reality that both Australia and the United States and a significant number of other countries besides are engaged in military operations against a fairly entrenched enemy in the form of uh, extremist terrorists that are operating in a number of countries in the Middle East. So I think it's perfectly reasonable that we should be using our intelligence resources to support our military operations in those countries. And on that point, Jennings has backing here from one of Pine Gap's most prolific critics, Richard Tanter. It does have a role, a legitimate role, in assisting in counter-terrorism operations, particularly in Australia as a case, activities in Indonesia, in the Philippines. These are areas we should be watching very carefully and terrorism is a real a real matter it may be exaggerated it may be misinterpreted but it is real pine gap can help us there but richard tanter and peter jennings agreement ends there jennings argues there's a legitimate reason for australia to give its best intelligence support to lethal drone strikes in the case of drone attacks um, you know, these things are really done on the basis of very precise intelligence about specific individuals that are being targeted. Again, I think they've been very successful in killing a number of um, senior terrorist figures, but that, that does require very precise intelligence of a real-time nature so that you can locate a particular individual and be absolutely certain that they're in, you know, the third car in the convoy, that type of uh, intelligence. If you don't have that sort of data, an, an attack won't take place. Peter Jennings says we have to rely on the Americans as part of the alliance. Otherwise, we would have to double our defence spending. It's fundamentally important to our defence capabilities. I've, on a very broad back-of-the-envelope calculation, said that we'd probably have to double our defence spending from 2 to 4% of gross national product if we didn't have the alliance to back us up with intelligence and a range of military capabilities. So it remains, uh, I, I think, something that's absolutely fundamental to Australia's defence and intelligence capabilities. But peel back a layer or two behind these pragmatic decisions to go all the way with the USA, and the fundamental nature of the US-Australia alliance comes into play. Former senior diplomat and ex-ambassador, including to the United States and Indonesia, John McCarthy again. You could say that there was a pretty clear reason to be in Afghanistan because there was an attack on the territory of the United States. That's covered by the alliance. That's quite straightforward. Also, with Afghanistan, it was a multilateral effort with UN endorsement. That, too, is important. Iraq, that was a different thing. And there are strong arguments to be made that we probably should not have been involved in that. The main, I think, arguable reason for being in that particular war was alliance dues. Now, whether they were in fact necessary, given that everything we had done with the United States, is another question. John, you just mentioned the phrase alliance dues. Can you explain what you mean by that? 
a lance juice has been uh, used uh, since the 50s. Certainly was used in Vietnam. And the argument essentially is that if you want the United States to assist Australia in circumstances which are crucial to Australia and Australian security, you are going to be in a better position to seek that assistance if you have worked with the United States on matters which are crucial to them, that is, alliance dues. Uh, now, there is an argument made that Vietnam was alliance dues. There's an argument made that certainly Iraq post-Afghanistan, uh, when George Bush Jr. went in. We're on the upload limit. I'll be back immediately.